how do you uh, define yourself are you a blogger a fashion influencer a designer an instagrammer uh, what is it that defines you the most well being in so we go as influencers um, but i think with house of misu we do a lot more than just that um even just being an influencer you're kind of an editor a model a writer a yeah. photographer a videographer you end up doing everything at some point or the other but with what we do we've gone from styling to designing to um doing collaborations with big brands like Bobby Brown and Shazay yeah. um to uh traveling the world to cover you know certain events like like a journalist would yeah. you know So I think I think a lot of things come under our banner and that's why we we just we go by a company name House of Misu because yeah. it sort of allows us to do whatever we want. How many Instagram followers do you have? Uh so we have over a lakh 30 now. And how long did it take to build it up to this much? Um well we started out 8 years ago and we've uh, never bought a single follower in our lives. Um also we curate our followers. We're very careful about the kind of followers we attract because we are favored towards like the aspirational and the more luxury brands. So we need to also ensure that our followers sort of meet that same um level of interest. And how did you and your friend, your best friend, uh decide to start this business? You oh, and your partner. Good question. Um so We actually have a journal from school where we've written I know why you kind of graduate from the primary section and you write notes to each other saying you know this is what I want to do when I grow up. But we've written we want to work together in fashion and um have our own bachelor pad. It's actually a fact. We uh, called my accountant, we registered our company and um her sister drew out our very first logo by hand and we started. We started as as I said we started as stylist, uh, created our own in house labor and then got into um, personal styling and blogging and you didn't enjoy the personal styling i love the personal styling i did not love the celebrity styling <laughs> personal styling is amazing we still do it like i yeah. still style uh, brides we do bridal styling now season so it's been very hectic for us um and we style regular women so we do like very trini and susana you know we do your wardrobe overhauls we come and we help you create a new wardrobe if you got a new job or you're recently getting married or you need help with your true so mm-hmm. so we still do that we love it just so not celebrity styling <laughs> i mean if why why tolerate tantrums when you're not oh god no. you know why make someone else the boss i don't throw tantrums so i don't expect to have to tolerate someone else's right so um what was your inspiration and who was your inspiration because this is sounds like a very international mm-hmm. concept i don't think it's succeeded to this extent in india yet i think the reason why we haven't really peaked as intensely as they have internationally is because um the people who are in the who are heading the marketing on the higher levels here a lot of them don't understand it yet they themselves haven't reached that point of um accepting social media as the heart of marketing now yeah you know whereas abroad um every single person knows the importance of an influencer every brand every event you go to um they have uh, separate budgets for influencers and their bloggers here we're still waiting to get to that level is blogging big here uh it it's growing at a pretty fast pace it's not as big as it should be mm-hmm. or as big as it is abroad as i just said but it's definitely growing at a fairly fast rate so what we did is when we started out we were we were earning through our styling gigs and our um in-house labor um but soon after that when we started getting approached to put uh brands on our platforms we realized that as our followers grow we can start putting numbers yeah. to this so um we created a sort of uh, scale for ourselves and once we hit this number yeah. we'll up our price to this once we hit this number we'll up our price to this so now where we are we have a media kit we have our prices listed which we send out to the brands when they get in touch with us So that's basically how you should do it. And how many brands do you endorse? We have ongoing um, collaborations with 15, 20, I guess. 15, 20 brands. Yeah, I, like I know that in a day I have to discuss or post or um reply to at least 15, 20. So also we have to keep ourselves constantly updated with all the new developments in social media because it's literally growing at the speed of light you know suddenly instagram has insta stories and um suddenly uh twitter is no longer as relevant or 
um, Snapchat has these new ways where you can create your own Snapchat icon which helps other people follow you if they yeah. tag it. So there's a lot of these things that are constantly happening which might seem extremely overwhelming for laymen. But for people who are in the industry, you have to understand it, you have to embrace it and you have to learn how to make it work for you. Yeah. So unfortunately, we're not very good at Snapchat but we're excellent at, at uh, Insta Story. So you know, like you kind of find what works well for you and you use that. I would suggest that like, you shouldn't try to do everything. Definitely understand everything, make sure that you know how to use it, but find what works best for you, what you're good at and stick to that. So describe two or three major collaborations that have worked out very well for you. Wow, um, well I did an amazing collaboration with Bobby Brown where we created a curated gift box um, called the Misu Box of Love. We did uh, Paris Fashion Week with MAC which was great because I got to um, sit front row at uh, Ellie Saab and go backstage at Ellie Saab and Gian Battista Valli. Um, so we do a lot with like Pyle Single, um, we do a lot with exhibitions and things where the, of course only the brands that we love. We do a lot with Gaurav Gupta with Tarun Taliani. So yeah, we, I mean we love working with Indian designers, I wouldn't want that to stop ever. And one ongoing one right now we're doing with Shazi which has been, which is the first of many to come I hope, where we're creating our own um, Misu collection with Shazi and uh, it's basically like beautiful wearable jewellery. Brands must be approaching you now also that need facelift and need like a younger, more yes. sort of cool yes. portion. Because we also work with, with some brands on a consultation basis where we help them sort of um, uh, angle their brand in ways that work for the new age. And what's your target? What is the age group of the people that follow? Um, so according to my insights from about 18 to 35 18. is the is our target audience. We don't really go much you know, lower than that. That's what makes us different from a lot of the other influencers. They are, they are sort of focusing more on the younger, you know, 14 to 16, 14 to 20 sort of demographic. Um, and I think our audience is primarily the female, obviously, and in either like Bangalore, Delhi or Mumbai. What is the long-term plan or the five-year plan? Where do you see yourself? What are you looking to build? So our long-term plan is reaching a point where we don't need to always have our faces as the brand. The brand speaks for itself. So that's why we chose House of Misu. We want it to be like a one-stop shop for everything chic to do with lifestyle, food, fashion, beauty, um, travel, skincare, everything. So, a brick and mortar store, um, what international presence on uh, the websites and, and in people's homes, hopefully. Um, and yeah, and we don't have to be as hands on as we would be now, you know, like so you get funding, we'd really grow the brand, and hopefully, sky's not the limit. Mm -hmm.